seeing as how Halloween's <laughs> around the corner, I wanted to tell you the scary tale of the eons at the Tacoma Dome, a portrait in public art uh, held. And the reason I want to tell this is I think this, um, in these series of incidences have been a real wound in Tacoma. I think they're more of a scar now, but they're still present. Happened in 1981 through 85, and this is my disclaimer. I was a, a scrubbed-faced uh, high school student at the time, as you can tell by the permed mullet. <laughs> <laughs> high school, seen in my high school yearbook, I was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, having no idea what was going on. So those of you in the audience who lived through this, please forgive me if I misrepresent something. I have, you know, hardly any time to talk about. Here's the 80s. I just want to bring you back a little bit. Um, there were two princes and one princess at the time. Um, it was a time of terrible recession, high unemployment. The banks had just imploded. Kind of sounds familiar. Um, we had giant appliances to listen to music. And of course, everyone had one of those ELF telephones, right? So um, just to talk about public art, it was, it's still a pretty new profession, but it was then for sure in 1975 when Tacoma had one of the first percent for art ordinances around. And so um, it wasn't really till 1981 when the Tacoma Dome was built that a high ticket item came, came across the plate to really have to do something. So the city brought in some heavy hitters to be on the jury panel, one of which was Michael Graves, who's Target, Tea Kettle fame, but also the head of the Princeton Architecture Department. They brought in Ira Licht, who was a former uh, public art manager with the NEA, and uh, um, Diane Vanderlip, who was the curator for contemporary art at the Denver Art Museum, and they brought them in to, to really bring in some, some major work. They chose four finalists, one of whom was Richard Haas. His work is shown here. He was a Trump Lloyd painter, still is. And he proposed doing uh, constellations of the Northwest sky and um, little, the stars would light up with actual lights. And the pieces on the right are actually in our collection now. George Siegel proposed doing something on the interior, the tightrope walkers, as you can see. And um, it would sort of look like this piece that was in Princeton. What I heard is that he kind of had some of those tightrope tight walkers laying around that he could uh, sell to us for a, a fine price. And I don't think people really responded to that uh, all that well. My favorite one is, is that Andy Warhol competed, um, and the flower for the Tacoma Dome is on the right. My best story that I heard is that people at, at the Tacoma Mall or something made that same pyramid of Campbell's soup cans in protest for bringing the Warhol to town. But obviously, he's the, he's the biggest blue chip uh, contender there. His proposal was, he'll do a flower. We're not sure how, but it'll be on the dome somehow. So this is Antonakis' proposal. I dusted it off very badly and brought it out of our closet to photograph it the other day, but he wanted to make the world's largest neon sculpture that could be visible from the sky, which would have been pretty darn cool. <laughs> And yeah, okay. So this, I bet you some of you are actually in this. This is the actual visitor register that was trotted around town. They brought those proposals to three different places and asked people what their opinions were. And people, you know, would say which one. Some people said none of the above. But it was really a, an extensive community outreach um, piece for this, which was very impressive. And uh, so Itanakis got chosen, and this was his proposal for how he'd attach the neon to the roof. But Jimmy Zarelli, the uh, contractor, the roof contractor, refused to to um, ensure the roof if anything went on his roof. And I, I heard that he said that thing isn't going on my roof, and they they basically killed it. Um, but. <laughs> Antonakis was asked to go back and come up with another, another plan for the inside. And I think that's when all hell broke loose because people started to get to really focus in on the fact that the city was going to pay $272,000 for neon. And they started this whole campaign against neon, no neon campaign. They said it, was, it wasn't an art form, it was better for the, the seedy neighborhood down in this is South Pacific. You can see Elmo's on the, on the right there. And um, con conversely, there was a pro-neon side. It was really this class warfare of, yes, you know, the elitists versus the Philistines, and the North Enders versus the South, South Enders, and the so-called elitists versus the um, blue collar, which I think is a really dangerous uh, dichotomy to set up. But um, things went on and it did get installed, as you know, you've probably seen it. Um, and people were still really mad. Now usually when you put something in, you know, people kind of, you know, all right, it's in, whatever, let's go on to our next uh, battle. But they didn't. They wanted it, the no to the people wanted it down. This is my favorite thing. If no well-paid artist is going to make a fool out of Tacoma, and I don't think they needed to pay a well-paid artist to do that. Um, one of my favorite quotes is that Antonakis would lead 
uh, domino fashion in, into Maoism, and they came up with songs, and it was incredible the amount of effort that went into this anti-neon thing, to the point where they put out this ballot uh, for how much money it would cost to remove it completely, um, put a curtain over it, I mean, what is it, the, <laughs> or um, move, it, move it somewhere else, and um, people voted, and, and they actually gave this uh, serious consideration. And I think uh, when the mayor of Seattle offered to buy the piece and basically said, oh, um, we don't want you to embarrass our whole region and we have an Antonagas that we think is just fine, um, the, the mayor of, of Tacoma, they decided to keep the piece there and uh, the known to neon people wanted to recall the mayor and several of the council members. And even, um, but still even a year later in November, a year later they put on the ballot a proposition to, to end the whole percent for our, our um, funding, which, which happened, they won. And so for 15 years from 85 to 2001, we had no funding mechanism for public art with this big, you know, Tacoma doesn't like public art, Tacoma doesn't like art. We got it back in 2001 and this is the convention center. And when I was working on this, the, uh, the contractor for the curtain wall was trying to refuse to insure the curtain wall if we were gonna put the art glass in there. And I was like, no, this, this can't happen. Obviously they didn't prevail, but I thought, you know, for one, with all the things we do in public art to try to make things happen, it could be one person who can do that. But I want to leave you with this, you know. Um, Andy Warhol didn't have the technology back then. We have it now. We have the Warhol flower. There are generations of people who have grown up and are adults now since 1985. And this could be seen from the sky as well. So I just think it would be cool to do that. <laughs>